um, make sure you do that. It's not even a quiz. You've got to read the syllabus. And you want to read the syllabus because you want to know what's going on. And you want to take care of that because the next assignments are the following Sunday night at midnight. And you don't want to miss any. You get to miss one, but you don't want to use your free miss on the first week. Like, don't mess it up. So, or do mess it up because C's are in degrees and you remember we're all going to die exactly. So it doesn't matter. But... Uh, I'm not going over any of the assignments in class. It's all really, really clear on the syllabus, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, uh, just see, if you're one of these people, see Jeff right after class. Um, and two. Uh, this class, there's still seats in it. So if you're now at the end of your, kind of getting to the end of your second week of the semester and you're enrolled in a class and you're like, oh man, I shouldn't be enrolled in this, you can late drop it and you can pick up that class because it hasn't even met yet. Next Monday is the first meeting time. So just want to put that out there. You can see me after class if you're interested. Yo, and if you need, just your assignments really quickly. If you go to 119.org, all the videos you need are under your assignment videos right here. So here's like four and then here's three, or, yeah, three more. So they're all on 119.org. That's where everything is, y'all, right? Those are your video assignments that you're going to use. Um, okay, so today, all right, so listen, man. Today we are um, going to talk about race and ethnicity and but in particular we're going to talk about race and we're going to talk about ancestry and how to think about race how to talk about it how to talk about ancestry and in fact really what we should be doing is to is shifting not ever really talking about race right just so you know like in the world of of uh, sociology and anthropology and so on we most people don't talk about, don't use race. I mean, we do just because we're lazy, right? Like, I'm lazy sometimes, so I just talk about race. And because it's just so much a part of me. And, uh, and so it's still there, but people who are really deep in it, myself included, when I'm not being lazy, uh, we don't talk about race. We talk about ancestry because, and we talk about uh, ancestral populations, okay? So, what we're going to talk about today is how to categorize people into different groups and the value of that and the meaning behind that and so on. And it's cool. I think it's a, it's a, it, this is a, a thinking class. And I'm going to you know, bring some people up. We're going to do some things. But this is really a thinking class to get us to kind of, in some ways, all be on the same page. OK, cool? Um, real fast, I want to be, I'm just going to hit pause and say one quick thing. Uh, remember. Each attendance sheet is for each section. It never crosses the aisles this way. Okay, cool? Got it? And same on that aisle. So, uh, go to the first slide. So, this, this class is, in a way, inspired by this dude here. Some of you have probably heard of him. Um, we made the news because President Barron, last fall, said somebody applied. I don't even think they were a Penn State student organization. Applied to have him come speak on campus. Um, my understanding, but uh, this is the guy, this is the guy who was making a lot of splash, you know, kind of these things, as, the, as these things go, they kind of, people rise up in the news and, you know, media sources are always looking for something to write about or talk about or take videos about or who knows what, and then they die away, right? They sort of, you know, so he's um, right now not making a lot of news, uh, but he was part of organizing that, that rally um, in South Carolina that was, uh, you know, involved lots of folks who identified um, as uh, supporting white power and have a fear uh, that white people are getting pushed aside because it seems as though bec that we're only talking about people of color and elevating the rights of people of color and and whoever they might be, I say people of color, I don't know, everyone who's not white, um, and that white people sort of always get left aside. So these programs to help out people who are not white, um, there are all sorts of things going on and happening, and white people are, you know, what's going on with the white population, right? 
And so there's this fear among a certain segment of the population that we're really kind of in, that white people are kind of in trouble, right? So Penn State, in any case, denied the opportunity for this guy to come speak on campus because when he is speaking on campus, there's often, you know, the left comes out, or not just the left, I mean, you know, many people even on the right who don't like what, what are identified as racist ideas are coming out and protesting, and it's getting violent, and all sorts of things are happening. So President Barron said, "Nah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be about that." Okay. So uh, go to the next slide. So here's what here's the alt, the alt right, the alternative right, right. This is the kind of movement, and here's what they're saying: um, white culture of European origin. This is not Jews, by the way. So Jews, even you might be European and Jewish, but that doesn't include you. So. Uh, is the most advanced culture and, uh, in the world, okay? And at risk of being eliminated and or weakened through multiculturalism. So the idea becomes, the, the, the core idea is that, like, look, white people have contributed a lot to this world and we're really important. It's really, you know, we, the, the value we bring to it. And when you start to water white ideas down with ideas from other cultures that are not white, you really you know, in, in many ways, risking, advancing, moving the world forward because white people got us to where we are, you know, which is like, I don't know, the fact that you're reading that on a screen or the fact that you're holding these phones or any number of things, right? And so if we weaken that or if we sort of set white people aside who are really capable and in, in their place, we move people of color, black and brown people, then that's a real problem for advancing civilization, okay? So humans of European ancestry, again Jews, sorry, it's not you, uh, are the most evolved humans. In fact, you know, the alt-right, by the way, we talk about the racism. Most of the racism, the majority of the racism, or at least what I'm able to ascertain, it's more directed at Jewish people than black people and brown people. So it's kind of funny. Uh, but uh, Europe, uh, humans of European ancestry are the most evolved humans physically, intellectually, psychologically, and morally. Okay, so this is part of this. And for the good of humanity, white culture and people might need their own ethno state. So it may be that we need to set aside some land, and some of these folks are arguing here in the United States, we need to set aside some land so that we can um, have, give it to white people and only white people and allow them to really allow them or us because you know I'm white allow us to do what we do best which is make really smart and talented children in advanced civilization okay so this would be the classic definition of racism that when you believe that certain groups ancestry groups talk about racial groups, but I'll make that distinction in a second, are superior or inferior on the basis of biological characteristics. That is the core definition of racism. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that, you know, your racism doesn't have to be that, you know, this particular group of people here, usually people with brown skin, are, are inferior, so therefore you're racist, right? It could be, um... Uh, a person with brown skin, and I think that white people are inferior. That's racism, right? Or it could be that I think we're just superior. Nobody's really inferior. Everybody else is all really where they're at. But my group, or this one particular group, is superior. That's ra that would be racism. That's what, how we would define in the classic kind of sense of the term. So this is, these are beliefs that are really grounded deeply in racist ideology. Okay, cool? Got it? So what I want to do today is talk about some of the problems of making a statement like this. For example, what are we talking about white, when we say white people? What are we talking about? We say black people. We say Asian people. I've already kind of dug into this a little bit, right? But what are we really talking about? Like how can you make some kind of determination about a population based on some undefined characteristics of that population? Okay, since we don't even, I don't even know what white people is or are, or whatever, I'm not even sure. So anyway, uh, okay, bro, go to the next one. Um, so first question becomes, um, how do we categorize people into distinct racial groups? Like, how do we do this, right? And there are two things to keep in mind. One is biology, distinct racial groups, meaning that, uh, bro, can you st stand up real fast? We look at, we look at, can you turn around right here. So what's your name? John. John. 
So we look at John here and we say, well, we look at his characteristics. If it was just me and John on a desert island, you'd say like, well, you, he has different characteristics than, than you have, Sam. And so therefore, you're clearly in these, biologically speaking, you're in two different groups. And then, you know, when we add somebody else in and who looks different from us, then we got another group. But we can put someone who kind of looks like John. Bro, stand up real fast. So you don't look like each other from, from my perspective, but you look more like a group than I do. If you said, hey, is Sam part of this group? We'd say, no, nah, like these guys. But then you might say, well, no, but we're going to base our racial group, our biology group on height. So what's your name, bro? Kevin. So then you'd say, okay, well, Kevin and Sam, you're kind of like the same. You'd be in the same group. And then so we'd be over here and John's in his own group over there. You see, it just depends on how you want to do it. So it could be hair color. It could be, you know, the shape of the eyes. It could be shape of the nose. It could be height. It could be weight. It could be anything, right? It's biological characteristics, okay? So what you want to do then, gentlemen, so for example, what you could do is, so look out in this room and see all the variations of people in this room and imagine how you would divide them up into racial groups and how, or ancestry groups and how many ancestry groups you would have. Like, imagine how, how would you do that? Like, she's brown, but, you know, she's not brown like he's brown, right? And she's not brown like he's brown, and he's not brown like she is, and he has kind of wavy hair, and he has straight hair, and like, shit, like, how far you want to go? Like, we could have a hundred easily, I don't know, you might, if I said, hey, you do it, and you do it, and I do it, you might end up with three groups, you might end up with 30 groups, I might end up with a hundred, just depending on the characteristics that we would use. Does that make sense? Cool? So how do you do that? Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Uh, so um, that's biology. So using biology as a foundation of race. Now we say, so what's this guy, Spencer, talking about? Is he talking about biology? If so, like, well, what? what, uh, what? How's he defining white people? Who's really white? If you're going to choose Jews, like, why not choose Jews? Because Jews, unless you're Orthodox Jewish, Unless you have a really narrow view of Orthodox Judaism, you, you don't think that Judaism is a race. Some, some people think, some people might believe Judaism is a race. Right? So Orthodox, you trace your lineage through your mother, right? And you always through your mother because then you, 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 you don't know who your father is, but you always know who your mother is. And then you can go back. There are, there are Jews who believe that or there are their particular group of Orthodox Jews goes all the way back to Abraham. It's like, damn, that's a long way back, right? And so we then constitute our own race. Like, because we connect biologically all the way back to the very beginning. And ultimately, I suppose, to God, right? To Yahweh or whoever. So we, but, you know, if you're not, and if you don't, if you don't believe that, then like, well, if you're Jewish and, you know, your family's from Poland or Germany, and, you know, your family's been f living in Germany for, I don't know, like, 500 years, how are you any, or 2,000 years, how are you any different than Germans? You know, so you're Jewish and the other person's Lutheran and like, how the hell are you any different, right? So he's trying, they're trying to make these proclamations about white people. And I'm like, I don't even know what white is. So how do you make even that statement? And then we're going to make a really strong statement about the superiority of white people. You better know, you better be able to define it. So we're going to run into this. The second thing is you could just do it on the basis of sociology. So it's kind of like, you know, Americans constitute a unique population, sociologically speaking. People are here. So not racially speaking, but sociologically speaking. Or, I mean, we could go any number of ways, right? Like, you know, I just did, I don't know, with, with, with white people, so see, we could do it sociologically. It wouldn't matter if you're, you know, Jewish or, or Muslim or black or brown or you trace your ancestry 1,500 years ago to Japan, but you've been living in Germany for, or Switzerland forever. And like, it doesn't matter. You just come up with some criteria, which is mostly what we do. Okay, good. Got it? You're, if you're sufficiently if you're confused, that's probably a good thing. Okay. So let's go, to the, let's go to the next thing. So now, um, let's talk about evolution for a second. Let's talk about what we know, okay? When I say the word evolution, this is the kind of image that will often come up for most people. And, you know, it's as though, you know, we were apes and, 
you know, crawling around on all fours. First off, we can go back before apes, and then somehow we branch off, and we're apes, we're crawling around, look at, dragging our knuckles on the floor. And then, you know, we, we're starting to walk upright a little bit, and then, you know, we've figured out how to create spears or clubs or whatever, and then we're walking, right? It's never women, by the way. It's always men. And you never see penises, by the way, right? <laughs> It's like men do not want to see men's penises, unless you're gay, but most men are not gay, and so they don't, and even if you're gay, you probably don't really want to see men's penises either. Not like this, but like, why is it that if, when, you know, pictures of women, we always show breasts, but I don't know, whatever, okay, it's just a thing. So look, go to the next slide. But this is often what we see. We see the, the, ape, the chimps, the apes, we go up, and then who is it? Who's it always? It's always a white guy at the end. It's always like a white guy. And the image, what sticks in your mind, and this actually, this, this image is not from that long ago. It's like, why, is, why are white people most evolved? This is like that sort of subtle form of, of, a, of, a, of an ideology, a, quote, racist ideology that people don't even necessarily see. So this was an image that I, I pulled off a PBS program that wasn't that long ago, right? So anyway, um, notice it's always, you just never, I'm just saying, y'all, I'm not that I want to see it, I'm just saying, it's just fascinating that men just don't ever want to see other men's penises. But they expect, but it's like okay to show women and whether you're going to show, the, you know, the garden down below or breasts, whatever it is, men expect that it's okay for women to see the genitalia of other women. Because there's always these, all these places where we show it, but we never show our own penises. You, you, now that I've said that, pay attention to it a little bit. It's fascinating, right? So go to the next slide. Even when we're joking around, this is a joke slide, right? So here's... And then now we're evolving into this. But look, it's still a white guy. So it's no wonder that belief in evolution, when we think about these, these images that are most prevalent, belief in evolution is actually lowest among black people. Part of it is Christianity, right? But a big part of it is, well, this is what it is. It's an ideology that shows white people as being most advanced, okay? And what I want to say to you is, when you think about evolution, and that's what we're going to talk about right now, by and large, um, what, what, I, what I want you to think about is, um, hang on one second. What I want you to talk about is, um, or what I want you to think about is that it's way more complex than this. It is not about this. Okay, it is way more complex. It is not just human beings evolved from apes. It's like a, ma a majorly complex process of, of unfolding of life itself. Okay, that most of us know nothing about and yet we will still be asked time and again about things like our beliefs about evolution and we don't know a damn thing about what it means. Just like creation. You know, creation, there's, creation really isn't that complex. It's like you either believe or you don't believe in some sort of supreme real, you know, reality, some supreme creator who built this whole thing that we call life itself. Right, we never ask where the creator came from. That's just one of those mystical questions that it just is, right? The creator just is all omnipotent and all being and always was. We don't have data. You can't apply the scientific method. Some people have tried, but you, you really can't. It may be true. It may be there is a God. And I'm saying this to those of you who believe in creationism, okay? Because I, 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 want, you to not, I, I want you to not tune out for the rest of this class and probably a few other classes. Look, it's based on faith. If you believe in creationism, you have to believe that there's this book the book was, you know, by and large, the words of the creator who it came through the writers of the book and, you know, whether it's the, you know, the, 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 the Old Testament or the New Testament of the Bible or the Quran or, you know, that, and those words are truly the words of that creator and, and the, the way life is explained in there as being based on creation, I just believe on faith that that is true and that's how it happened. But that's not fact. 
Fact, is, fact has to be based on some kind of evidence. Fact could be based, you can base it on just faith and belief. But be careful that you don't say like, no, it's in this book. So therefore, whatever it is, like the froth, right? Here it is. So this is, imagine this is the, the holy text. It's in here, so therefore it's true. No, that, just because it's in here doesn't make it true. Your, your belief based on faith makes it true but the belief is based on faith not on fact that's a different thing okay evolution and i'm saying this this isn't like i'm not like being i don't want to be super critical here but look understand the vast majority of human beings have no understanding of the complexities of evolution we get it a little bit in high school maybe we take a class in college and then we go through our lives as though maybe somehow we understand this thing that is so complex that even when you get a phd in studying evolution the dynamics of evolution you only that all that phd means is that you've now have a doctorate in understanding all that you do not understand and so, therefore, like, even you, you you're going to be the one that's supposed to like, I don't really understand the process, right? But I do know we have a lot of evidence that tells a story that evolutionary process that human beings first started walking upright in Africa, right? In the Nilotic region of Africa, and that the process started going in lots of different directions. We're changing it in lots of ways, but there's so much evidence based on based on that we collect, that we see in the funeral years ago, whatever, great. If, if you believe that in, based on faith, good for you. If you have faith and your faith gets you to any belief at all, more power to you, man. Maybe it's true. I don't know. But I want to tell you that don't say evolution is untrue if you've never, ever even spent, I don't know, 10 hours studying it. Like, that just makes no sense, Right? That's like saying Donald Trump is an idiot and all you do is read the headlines. It's like, of course he's an idiot in the headlines, but you got to read behind the scenes. Be, actually read the deeper stuff and then you can start to see some things that maybe it's a little bit more complex than I imagine. Okay, is that cool? So, this is not evolution. That's the most important thing. Now, all right, bro. Um... First off, science, hey, can you, can you just block in that for one second? Let me just, are, are we good? Hang on, everybody take a breath. I'm going to just, just talking. And by the way, can I just say something about this? I don't, I just talk in this class. When I talk like I'm talking now, I talk like I would talk if I were sitting in a room with other people my age who have, I don't know, PhDs in sociology or something, right? Like I don't. I don't try to, I just, I'm just talking. I don't expect you to really follow everything, but what I do expect, all I'm trying to do is spark certain ideas. And if I can spark those ideas, then I can get, like that one about evolution. Like it's really cool, it's fine to be, to believe in creationism, that's fine. You know, because your grandparents did and your parents did and you grew up with that and that's just the belief that you have. But that doesn't make it true. It, makes, it means that you have faith that it's true. And your faith is fine, but it doesn't make it true. Any more than what Richard Spencer is saying about white people. And like, well, the white race is being weakened by multiculturalism. Well, that's true. All you got to do is just stand in his shoes and see what he sees. And maybe his parents believed it but I don't think in his case they did but let's say see what he sees and then you would say oh yeah okay well that's true anything can be true so like all right so that's fine but it, it, it but it doesn't make it really true and so that's just part of this this game this world that we're in okay Sci in the world of science everyone is all we're trying to do is break the world up to understand it so that's what science is it's like you take a complex world and you try to break it down to understand causality. Like why do things happen the way they happen? How is it that, you know, some people get rich and some people are poor? How is it that some trees grow? You plant like 10 seeds in the ground and one of them becomes really giant and overpowers the other ones and kills the other nine. And, and why is that? Why did the one do that? 
Science is about controlling reality. Let me do it again, and let me do it like five times, and let me control, and let me see if I can isolate the reason that one tree rises up and destroys the other ones. Let me just figure that out. And so you start doing all, using the scientific method and all this experimentation, and eventually, you know, you start to get answers that you think are connected to causality for why things happen the way they do and that's what science is so imagine that throughout the history human history that most people grew spent their entire lives living in an area through a this very small uh, a very small geographic area so everybody they ran into for the most part looked like them they spoke their language or they maybe spoke a different language but maybe they never ran into more than like two people in their entire lives who spoke a different language or a different dialect because most people live and die in the region in which they live okay it's very small in one little tiny valley and that's what it is I remember you know I spent um, I did a lot of my early research in Latin America in the mountains in Ecuador and I would go into these little mountain valleys and there were people who were you know like 60 and 70 years old and they never left the valley. They had never left. I would sit with people, and they, an airplane would go over, and people would say, hey, what's that? They oh, it's an airplane. What's an airplane? You know, and I'd explain it to them, and they just never left. They never saw anybody who didn't look like them, who didn't talk like them, who didn't see them. That's most of human history. So then imagine that people start getting on boats, and they start, they start traveling from one continent to another continent, and they arrive at that continent, where people look different and they look different because just it's, we'll get to that in a hot minute but you know suddenly they, they get off the boat and they're like wow look at these people they're so different and then you start saying wait how they get different who are they what are they and like how this makes sense and then suddenly people start developing all these questions and this is the this happens at the same time that the scientific scientific revolution is happening so go jeff next slide so here this guy was one of the very first people to create a typology of race. So in 1735, so he divides the world into three groups. White Europeans, they're inventive, acute. Of course, he's European, right? They're sharp and perspective and gentle. Because when I think about Europeans, the first word that comes to mind is gentle. And governed by laws, okay? Dark Asians, red Native Americans, severe, haughty, which means kind of overbearing, covetous, a governed by opinions covetous right covetous right it's amazing fuck it white the europeans go all over the world pillaging and stealing and whatever because they're coveting everything that everybody else has but they're not covetous they're covetous because they won't give it up <laughs> fuck it native americans won't give them all their gold so they so then europeans had to kill them all so but like well we wouldn't have had to kill you if you weren't covetous but you know you were so therefore okay but if you didn't have that bad trait you'd be all right and you'd be alive today and Mm, whatever okay black Africans lazy because that's exactly why they went to Africa to get slaves who were Africans because they were so lazy negligent and crafty crafty because they always were trying to escape from slavery I guess um, <laughs> anoints himself with grease I'm not sure what that is uh, governed by caprice based on sudden whims right okay got it so okay but look at this so here you go this guy Linnaeus is the dude who's uh, He's going to come up with this type, typology of race. He's going to divide the world into, in this case, three main groups. Right? And he's going to, of course, they're going to be like him. Like if Richard Spencer was black, like there are black like uh, Afrocentric scholars who study this stuff who are racist, right? Who believe things like, well, you know, blacks have more melanin in the skin. And so therefore, and melanin is what really produces the skin, makes the skin dark, you know, it's just the pigmentation that makes it dark, protects us from ultraviolet rays of the sun, and, but blacks have more of it, right? And because that's the nature of the dark skin. And, uh, and it's the melanin that produces the intellect. Because we know that melanin is connected to intellect, so therefore black people are smarter than everybody else because they have more melanin in their skin, and so therefore they have more intellect, right? So this is like this sort of Afrocentric scholar who's writing this, and I'm like, dude, fuck, seriously? That's dumb, right? But it's no more dumb than somebody who's writing, well, white people are superior because most white people have straight hair and because we have different colors hair like brown and blonde and black and so on and 
the texture of the hair and the color of the hair and having it be varied is the thing that really leads to greater intellect and leads to white people to being superior than everybody else. Like, that's just dumb. Okay, so, well, then this is as well. But this is what happens, right? Everybody's going to put their own group on top. Is that cool? Does that make sense? Like, you're not going to say, like, this is why, like, America, like, you grew up here in the United States, and it's like, if I ask people, like, I go down the street with a microphone, hey, what's the greatest country in the world? Well, the country that most Americans are going to say is going to be America, going to be the U.S. And if I start asking, how, how much, have you ever traveled outside the U.S.? Did most people say no, haven't traveled outside the U.S.? <laughs> That's our mascot, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mascot. Does he do tricks, by the way? No, he's too young for that. All right, we'll get some tricks. All right. So anyway, um, all right. Hang on. Bring it back, dogs. Bring it back. Um, so um, you put your own group ahead. I also, I just want to drop another turd in the punch bowl for a second, real fast, right? So. Um, when people say, yeah, you know, my country is, it's the best country in the world, and, and it, but they've never traveled anywhere, it's like, how do you know that? Like, how do you, how would you say that? Why would you say that? I mean, it's never, it's never more kind of revealing to me than of something. I'm not sure what it's revealing of, but when I, when people say that, and they've never actually been outside the U.S., you know, and, and all they do is kind of read headlines, and headlines, of course, are meant to deceive. I mean, the, the nature of headlines are to report news that's rare. You understand that, right? It's like, if it makes the news, it's a rare event. That's why it's news. There's a murder. Like, murders aren't always happening. The fact that it's reported, it's, if it gets reported in the news, that's it's exceedingly rare. You don't report things that are common in every, every place, right? So it's like, there aren't wars going on all over the world. Afghanistan, Iraq, whatever. Most people in the middle of a war, I've been in war zones. Most people are just living their lives. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. I mean, I, I've been in places where the bombs are going off. You got this, you got that. And people are like smoking hookahs on the beach and the bombs are, you know, it's like, yeah, well, whatever. Like, that's the nature of it, right? And so to, to, to base some opinion on, I don't know, like headline, who the fuck? I don't even know what ba people base their opinions on, but to say, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Here's what I'm saying. Don't ever say you're, you're, unless you visited even half of the countries in the world, and I don't mean just gone there for a day at a resort hotel. I mean really live in the plate, really understand it. You can't say your country is the best, man. You just can't. Don't ever say that. That's just dumb. I mean me, I, I don't know. I've, maybe I've been in, in a significant way, I've been in about 50 countries. And for many, I've lived abroad a lot, so I've been in lots of places. And I, everyone I've been to has been like, this is a really cool place. This is an awesome place. This is pretty cool. Has qualities that are way cooler than my own country. And we have qualities that are way cooler than each one of those places. It just is. It's life. It's cool. Okay? Same with people. All right, but anyway, let's go back. Uh, so, the first thing you got to do is... Go back to what I just said when I had the two guys up here. How would you define, divide the room up? Okay, so here, let's, let's do this. Um, can I get t the t Team White, the people before class that I identified, right? Can you just come down real fast? Um, team White. Was there somebody over here? Didn't I have pick someone over there? Was it all just these people? What kind of white are you? What kind of white am I? I'm perfect white, dude. I am white perfect. No, seriously. No, I am. Well, hang on a second. No, let me show you real fast. Hold on, hold on, team white. Hold on a second. Dude, because, can you get a shot of that? Because, is that going to show up on there? White, perfect. This is skin, this is the skin whitening cream that I use, pal. This is how I got to be, I used to look like you. But then I started using this, and now I get this. I got this in Ethiopia 
a couple years ago. And uh, I put this shit on. And, dude, I'm perfect, man. Dude, far, far too many black and brown people, by the way. Are, this is the number one cosmetic product in the world, by the way. Skin whitening cream. And it all has names like white perfect and stuff. Because we know white people are perfect. Well, I am, but, you know, the rest of you. Number one cosmetic product in the world. You talk about, you talk about ideology and, and imperialism. Talk about conquering people's minds. Really conquering people's minds. Like, whiteness has conquered, has gotten inside so deeply around the world that this, this, skin whitening cream, is the number one cosmetic product in the world by far. So people all over the world are putting this stuff on so they can look more like Team White. It's crazy. Why are they doing that? Because their minds have been colonized by some belief that some way of being in the world, some features are better than, more beautiful than others. Right? And so, okay. Great. Dude, get that shot right there. All right. So listen, here's what I want you to do. Um, just say your names really fast. We're not going to... Ben. Wait, and what's your ancestry? Uh, just European countries. What? I don't Give really us. know. I do you have any idea? No. Dude. Ben, and I'm um, German and Polish. Dude. Can't be more like Ben, Ben. You know what I mean? Know where you're from. Know your past. I'm Peter, and I'm Italian. Dieter? Peter. Peter. I'm Julia. I'm Polish. Dude, do you clean? Does your family, do you clean? Are you clean? <laughs> yeah, I'm very clean. Do you clean all the time? Yeah. Does your parents clean? Yeah, my grandma doesn't have a dishwasher. Dude, seriously? Yeah, yeah. I know. My, my, my wife used to, my wife's a Polak, so Love I get it. this, right? And I've been to Poland, and Poles are the cleanest, dude, all they do is clean. It's like, it's like it's nice. a hobby, right? Yeah. Your grandma, um, how often does your grandmother clean? All the time. I send my laundry to her house. Just <laughs> she like, loves yeah. it. I know. My wife would be, yeah, I don't know. She used to clean, here, here, seriously. So we, have, we used to have a ton of books in our house. We had like, I don't know, 3,000 books, right? Because we had like a library there. She would take the, she'd clean. She'd take the books off the bookshelf and clean behind them. And one day I'm like, dude, what are you doing? There's no dust behind there. They, you know, you clean the, it's like, but there might be, you know? Like, okay. Uh, Chris and I'm Italian. Chris Italian. I'm Mary Nell and I'm Irish. Mary Nell? Yeah. Dude, and that's her real hair, by the way. So, yeah. I'm Henry and I'm mostly Spanish and Scotch Irish. Yep. I'm Abby and I'm Swedish. Dude. Abby, <laughs> um, all I know is Welsh and Swedish. Welsh and Swedish, dude. And you're not friends, right? You were just sitting next to each other? Dude, Abby, Abby, you got both got Swedish, you need Ben and Ben. You, dude, you gotta have Italian in you. You do, for sure. Okay, so listen. Here's what I want you to do, right? Remember what we did with Asians? Brought Asians up, right? Okay, so look at, all, look at these. So we're going to get, bro, you might, um, Lando, you might have to jump out in the eye. I don't know if you can get this, but okay, bro, you're going to have to zoom in. So turn to look at the, look, I want you, what I want you all to do is look at their faces, these are all white people. Like, what do they have in common? Their faces, they're all different, right? I picked, dude, look at this dude here, Ben. Turn to the side, bro. Look at his profile, right? Look at, look at him compared to, dude, this Ben. Look at this guy. Look at him. Dude, you, look at his nose. Look at this guy's nose. Dude, what's your background? Italian. You're Italian, and you're Italian. Dude, come stand next to, you guys stand back to back, all right? Dude, they're both Italians. Look at their noses. They're totally different. They're to they have totally different faces. Look, if you look at, the mor look at the morphology of their skulls. Okay, you guys don't mind, right? Look at the morphology of their skulls. Look at like, look how his skull goes back here. His doesn't. They're both Italian. Look at, he's got this. The, do, you know, do you mind? Do you all, yeah, you're cool, right? With me touching you? Okay. Look at, look at the little bump on his nose here. He doesn't have that bump on his nose. So I will guarantee if we did a DNA ancestry test, they're not both 100% Italian because they're, they're different, right? And look at, so look at these dudes. Turn, go back to back here again. Look at, look at, same thing. Look at the morphology of their skulls. Look at their noses. He's got the bump here too. He's got the straight nose. Look, dude, turn, go forward. Look at the skinny, like this is Eastern European, by the way. His eyes right here. 
they're definitely Eastern European. Like the narrowness <laughs> of here, because the narrowness and, and like how his nose, nose is pointy. And see how like how mine is, I have a point. Dude, I have a point on my nose too. I had a nose just like yours, except I broke it and stuff. No, do you see, see the, the point right there, right? Okay, so here, let's go down here. Let's see. Look at her, look at their faces. T two, totally, totally. Can you, co you come down, can you come stand right here next to her, actually? Totally, totally different looks, right? Look at them. G zoom in, look at her eyes, right? <laughs> Dude, these the very different eyes than her eyes. Like, totally different, y'all, right? Like, it's not, it's not even in a world of similarity, right? It's completely different. So their hair, that's fine, but hair is hair, like, whatever, right? But look at, look at her lips, right? Look at her lips. Like, look at, like this, you have, you distinctly have a Scandinavian features for sure. Not, not even a question. And you, look at your, no, look at, okay, turn back to back. What's that? I hate my nose. No, dude, you have a cool nose, dog. Wait, hang on. Dude, we're going to work on this. Why do you not like your nose? It's big. No, it's not big, dog. It is. Big nose. Look at his, he's got a big nose, dog. <laughs> Come on, you, you don't have a big nose. Dude, who has, hang on, hang on a second. You do not have a big nose. Dude, hang on. Dude, it's all, rel first off, it's relative. No, it's completely relative. It doesn't matter. Dude, you have, a, you have an average size nose for sure, right? Not even a question. And this is the nature of it. Like, your nose, dude, first off, do you know how your no why your nose is the size that it is? No. You know, like, where you got your nose? No. Okay, dude, listen. Let me help you out here okay. real fast. Okay. One of the things that we know about noses is that you, when, when we see like really kind of flat and small noses, we tend mm -hmm. to see those in like humid regions, in hot regions. You can turn, you can turn, you can turn any way you want, y'all, just get comfortable. Hot in like more humid regions, and then we see like, we can see flatter and narrower noses, okay? So we see this with lots of, lots of African, Sub-Saharan Africans, but we see it with other groups as well. When you get into colder, more arid regions, you start, the nose starts to grow. And it starts to get longer and it starts to get wider. And the reason is because it, it moistens and cools the air before it hits the lungs. So you want your nose to be as big as possible in certain regions because that's survival. Because not only do you, do you want that, well, it's going to be that way because if it's not that way, you wouldn't have survived. Like the nose is largely, ba it's a, like the size of the nose is a survival mechanism. So those of you, if you, have a, if you have what you consider to be a really, really large nose, then what you need to know is your ancestors evolved, right? Evolved in an area of the world where it got cold, it got, it got um, dry, and they needed to, to cool the air before it got into the lungs, okay? Because you, like, you ever on a hot day, you ever do this, like... <gasps> And it stings, it really hurts. Or like, <laughs> you ever do that? No, not on a hot day, on yeah. a cold day. No, on a really cold day. Yeah. Like go outside tonight. Uh -huh. When you leave this classroom, just take a yeah, big... Yeah, it burns. It burns. Your nose starts to run. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a problem. Yeah. And so therefore, we see the nose start to grow. And if the nose doesn't grow, yo, ready? Ready? I'm, I'm going to give you, a, this is your life teaching here, right here. So if exciting. your nose wasn't the size of, that it was... If your ancestors didn't evolve in the way that they did, hang on. If your ancestors' noses didn't evolve in the way that they did, you wouldn't be here. Because their noses had to evolve in the geographic region where they lived. And if it didn't do that, you wouldn't be here. Like you, if you had her nose, where you, if you're up in, if you're in certain regions of the world and you had her nose, your ancestors wouldn't be, they wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. They look cute though. What's that? They look cuter. Dude, no, they don't, dude. That's just, that's nice it. That life has colonized you. Listen, <laughs> God, listen, y'all, right? Stop. Can I just give you something? I'm going to drop, can I drop an F bomb? I'm going to drop my one. I, have I dropped an F bomb yet today? Three? No, I whispered them. Bruh. Okay. You dropped four. I was whispering them, though. Okay, four whispers equal one. I heard. So now I won't drop an F bomb. Look. Do it. Look, can you stop? Can you all, like, just stop. Just don't. Listen, dude. It's just <laughs> like skin color, really. Do you know how many people around the world look at you and look at your skin and are just like, oh, my God, if I only had her skin or if I only had her hair, if I only had. It's like if we keep doing that to ourselves, we just, we're just wickedly unhappy our whole lives. It doesn't matter if we're men or women. 
You know what I mean? doesn't matter. All these features are your lips, your eyes, your nose, your lips, your eyes, mine, etc. All they are is a sum, summary of the evolutionary process that our ancestors went through. doesn't matter. So you just to, to appreciate it because it's only, the only reason you're alive, right? Look, red hair. So look at her. Her def definitively, so what's your background? Welsh? Um, Irish. Irish? Yeah, so you get the hair. By the way, red hair is going to, there will be no more red hair probably in about 50 years is the idea, right? That's, some people are thinking that anyway. But look at her eyes. Like this is completely different than her eyes. Her nose, her everything's different. Like see that? Look at this dude. Here. What's your name again? Uh, Mary Nell. Mary Nell. Dude, look at his face. Dude. What's, what's your name again? Henry. Henry. Dude, look at his face. Dude, we're all good, right? We're cool? We're all good? Look at like how his, look at how his face is like a little bit, there's less, this is how we do this in the world, right? We're, all we do is look at differences. There's no right or wrong, right? Most all of our features, most all, some like a nose, some like eye, there's certain things, right? Like noses for one, but most all of our features were preferred sexually at some point in time. So this is just the nature of it. But like, look at his face. Like he looks totally different than her. Here, stand next to him. Look at that. These are two white people. They're totally different. Their DNA is different. Everything about them is different, right? Like all you got to do is look and pay attention. And when, and like, and, and what's, what's your background? You're Welsh, well, Swedish. Welsh and Swedish? Yeah. yeah, okay, so look at her, right? And you're taller, right? So same thing. Look, look, you look at her, look at her eyes, look at the, like her eyebrows right there. And, and like, dude, it's so, it's cool. It's cool, right? So you go with that. So pay attention to it, okay? There's nothing, so this guy, Spencer, wants to say something about all these white people. Look, you're like, you're different people. It's like, I don't even know what you are, like your DNA. You know, like, it's, I, do you share, you know what I mean? Are we there? We got it? All right, man. Thanks, y'all. Team white. Dude, nice nose, by the way. All right. All right. Dude, thanks, man. All right. Dude, if anybody, if anyone wants to try some white perfect, by the way, after class. All right. So here's the deal. Go to the next slide, bro. What happens is evolution plays, plays a trick. Can you, dude, can you stand up real fast? Ev no, hang on. Frank, Franklin, you stand up real fast. Come here. Dude. Uh, evolution plays a trick on us because we are, we're 99.9% .9 the same, okay? So we're brothers, right, from another mother, but we're brothers. We really are brothers in a, in a stink way. He, for, for, we probably share more DNA than you do with, dude, stand up real fast, than, than they do. It's, it's just as likely that, that, that we share more DNA, we're more similar, genetically speaking, or that we're more similar, genetically speaking, than they are with each other, right? This is complex. So na na evolution plays a trick on us. We're 99.9% .9 the same, okay? Everything. But there's a very small percentage of our DNA admixture that is related to our external appearances. So we're the same. Look at us, right? We're the same but there's a tiny amount of our genetic material that accounts for these external differences. That's what you see. And so you think, whoa, we're really different. Here's Sam, here's Franklin, here are these two people. They're like totally different people, different races. Different. No, man, look, we're, we're the same. You're, you're, all you're doing, you're picking out a tiny fraction of our genetic material and using that tiny fraction of our genetic material to build a wall between us and say, oh, you're in one group, I'm in another group. But the fact is, we're really all in the same group. And so if you, so he's, he could be more similar to any one of those white people that were up here than any one of them is similar to each other. So you get that. So when you got a guy like Richard Spencer who wants to talk about all these white, white, the white racial groups, dude, what exactly is that white racial group? If you're all sharing basically the same genetic material, what is it? 
So this is the trickster. Evol life itself is a trickster. I look at him and I'm like, oh, dude, he's totally different from me. No, he's not. He's the same as me. You, got, you see that, right? Sociologically, he can be different, but he's not. Dude, thanks, dog. Wait, you got to say one thing. I don't know anything at all. Just say your full name. I don't know. Franklin Decker. <laughs> Dude, thanks, dog. <laughs> Dude, you got, you got clapping for that. Dude, what are you going to clap? That he says his own name? Like, well, you, you know, black like, people, sometimes you got to like. You do get 300 points on your SATs. <laughs> What's that? 300 points on your, is that how you got 50 per, first percentile Dude, on your SATs because you spelled your name right? Dude, exactly. That's how I got it, dude. Listen, here. See these, these girls right here? They're twins, right? So they're twins. They're not identical twins, but they're twins. And if you look at them, though, they really, they look, they do. If you get, if you get past, if you just look at their facial features, they do look almost identical, right? So this is the thing. One little twist. One little twist in their genetic admixture, right? One little tiny change, and there you go. Very different. It's like, okay, what, what are we talking about with these racial groups? Like, what exactly is this all about? All right, so here. Um, okay, I already talked about this, so we can go back. All right, so here's what we think. Go to the next slide. Once again, here's, here's although there are some new there, there's, there are a lot of new science-based evidence coming out that they're actually finding some uh, early human populations over in this region of China. So it's really fascinating. Like the whole evolutionary, the, the story that we tell is changing constantly, right? So don't, don't think that they, it's not that they have, that. we will never have the answer. You never have the final answer. Sci you never have an answer with science. You only have your best guess based on the evidence that you have. And at any moment in time, you have to keep studying it and get your next best guess. Okay, is that cool? So like you never, anyway, this is what we think. So human beings, we first started walking upright. We start going in different, but look at where we go here. Out of Africa, over here, over here, right? Go to the next slide, bro. Where are they from? Where are they from? Just say to the person next to you, where do you think they're from? What part of the world? Where's she from and where is he from? So listen, so she, she's from Malaysia, okay? So she is, technically speaking, she's Asian, right? They're from New Guinea. They are, technically speaking, Asian, right? So go, go forward once. So watch. So right here. So human beings, we leave, and there they go. They end up right here, okay? So later, you know, we... we Got it? So like, okay, wh wh what's the complication here? The genetic material. We think we understand, but the people who are actually studying this and comparing human populations know that there's not much we can say about any population. Go to the next one. How about them? Who's Native American? Who do you think? How many say A? Here, raise your hand. Everyone raise your hand. I want. How many say A? How many say B? How many say C? And how many would say D? How many didn't say anything because you're too lazy? Even raise your hand. All right. Okay, got it. Look, um, they're Native American. Okay? They're Siberian. So here, can you go forward again? Um, crossing over the Bering Strait. We actually, this number is changing because new evidence is coming up. And then they come populate into the Americas. Okay, so go backwards one. So if you look, some, wait, hang on, go forward. So some people stay here, some people stay here. Okay, so now go backwards. So they, they, they all stayed. They're Siberian. So technically speaking, they're Russian. And if they're Russian, wait, hang on. 
they're Russian. Does that mean they're European? Or does that mean they're Asian? They're the Eurasian. Like, what are they, right? Okay, so some stayed here, some crossed over. They basically have very almost identical DNA, but they're different. Okay, so this is how we roll. Next slide. Yo, Lauren, how are we doing on attendance sheets? Are you checking them? You got them all? Yo, should I ask? Hey, where are the attendant? Come, raise your hand if you have the attendance sheet. We're good? Over here? Good? All right. We're good in this row? Cool. Hey, why don't you, Lauren, why don't you pick them up in a, in a, in a few minutes? Go around and get them. Okay, listen, how many say that she is, um, how many say that she is, hang on. I got to remember which one's which. Okay. How many say that she's Navajo? How many say that she is Peruvian? How many say that she's Chinese? Okay. How about her? Navajo? Peruvian? Chinese? And Navajo, Peruvian, Chinese. Okay, so listen, man. So she's Peruvian. She's Navajo. And she's Chinese. Okay? Now, so go back one. So what we have here is people crossing over. And um, some people stay here. The genetic material changes. I mean, I, I have, when I, was doing my, when I was doing some of this work in Ecuador years ago, I would be sometimes in communities that, had, that were really had very little differentiation and admixture at all. And sometimes we'd be, I'd be in these communities where there's no electricity and we're sitting around by candlelight, maybe at night having a meeting, and maybe like a big circle. And I, I would swear that I was in a Chinese village, even though I was in the highlands of, of say, of the Andes, because so many people looked Chinese, looked Asian in that way, East Asian. Okay, so here, go to the next slide. So here's, here's something. You know, so here's the slave trade, right? And, man, I don't know. I'm not going to have enough time. I'm going to start class out with this other thing. So but we're just going to do this. We're going to do something. I'm going to jump ahead. So here's the slave trade. To be clear, most people, human beings that were taken out of Africa were, did not come to the United States. A very small number came to the United States. And the United States was really the only procreating um, population of slaves that in all the other regions like in you know in the West Indies and South America and Brazil they were not allowed to procreate or they did not procreate so if we, you, you worked a slave pretty much to death and then if you needed more slaves you would go back and get more in Africa and, and the slave trade for them was so profitable that and so violent and so profitable that it was cheaper to go get another slave and slaves were very expensive, by the way, compared to today, right? Very expensive. So, um, but there, they were so profitable, you just can work someone to death. But most slaves came into the Americas and into West Indies and so. Okay, got it? But this is not Africa, dude. When someone says Asian, remember all the Asians I brought up front? If someone says, I'm Asian American, or you're going to make a statement about Asian Americans, or you're going to make a statement about European Americans, remember that, well, technically Russia is part of Europe, and so therefore those Siberians that we just saw here are European, and so therefore, even though they look Asian, they're Europeans, they're like, what are we talking about when we say European Americans? And what are we talking about when we say Asian Americans? And what are we talking about when we say African Americans? So here's what I need. Can I, can I get, I need, I want to, I want, I just want to show you something. Um, can I get a couple Africans who were up here the other day? 
who, just a couple Africans, I don't know, Nigerian, it doesn't matter who you are. I need, but I, you need to be 100% African. I need, bro, we have our Nigerian, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, the two of you. The two of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, come. Were you up here the other day? You were, right? Okay. And, that, and now I need, I need like say three African Americans who identify as African American, right? You trace your ancestry to slavery here in the United States. One. Hang on. Hang on, hold tight. Somebody, who else? Who else is African American? Teresa's. All right, dude. Bro, yeah, okay. You and. Hang on. Dude, how about you? You. All right, dudes. So here's the deal. Here, you, you all move down a little bit. You stay right there, bro. Dude, you're going to have to pull your hoodie back because we got to... Okay. You, you stand together. Can you stand, you stand down here? So here's the deal. So you are, you're, all, you're Nigerian, Nigerian, and you, hang on, you're from Sudan. Okay? Dude, first off, do you see the difference in her features from their features? Like, do you see that? Remember the white people? Do you see? She's from Sudan. So Sudan is, here, let me just show you so you're really clear. Dude, first off, Africa is a big place. There's more human variation in Africa than anywhere in the world. It's a massive, Sudan is up, is up here, okay? They're from down here. So the two of you, you're both Nigerian. They're from here. She's from up here. Immense variation, right? And so look at her features even. Can, look at her features compared to their features, right? Very different, right? When I saw her, for example, if you know what, if you have any, if you've traveled and you have a sense of it, I knew immediately she was from the Nilotic region, either Sudan or Eritrea or Ethiopia or somewhere. But I, I actually thought, the first thing I thought was Sudan, because you don't look Ethiopian, but you could, right? But, and I knew me, and he's not, like, both, take your hat off real fast. And he's not, and she's not. She's, dude, you know, you look at her and you know she's, there's no way she's Sudanese. Like, you know that, right? She's not from that region. And now these, so you're African American, right? All three of you. And what's your name? Mila. What is it? Mila. Mila, and where are you from? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? And when you say African American, yeah. what do you mean? Uh, black. Like, Just black? I mean... What do you mean? What do I mean? Like, I'm a brown person. My parents are black. Yeah. It's African-American. you have American. white in you? Uh, possibly. Yeah, Probably. why is that? Because, like, my mom's dead. All his family is, like, really light-skinned, kind of. Yeah. And we all look the same. Yeah. But, like, my mom is dark-skinned, and, like, my two brothers, one of them's dark-skinned, and one of them's light-skinned like me. So. Yeah? Okay. Pretty sure there's some white in there. So, Mila, bro. What's your name, dog? KJ. KJ? Yeah. Where are you from? Detroit. Detroit? Dude, so you're really black, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, he's a real black person right here, dog. <laughs> dog, that's a real American right there, dog. Uh, where, and where are you, um, and you're, dude, what's your hair? Can you pop your hat off real fast? No, I can't do that. Oh, uh, dude, dog. No, no cut. Can I just get a peek at it, though? I need a cut, dog. You gonna what's give me a cut? Oh, just because it's not cut. Dude, do you need a barber? Yeah, I do. Dude, it's hard to find a barber. And any anybody know a good barber? Help him out, dude. Dude, he'll help cook you up after class. All right, dog. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> dog, you just got roasted, man. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, dude, and yeah, nothing like the Detroit barbers. Yeah. So listen, man. So look at. Where, so where's your family from? Detroit. I know, but so the, where'd they come before Detroit, though? From the south somewhere. Do you know where? Uh, Alabama. From Alabama? Yeah. Okay. So they trace your ancestry to slavery. Where did your family come before Pittsburgh? You don't talk about it? No. Okay. All right. Do you have any white in you, bro? Probably. What's Puerto Rican. You got Puerto Rican? <laughs> yeah, you, got, you definitely have something. You have white in you, too, by the way. Dude, white man. All right. And what's your name? Mike. Mike, and what's your story? Uh, my family's from 
I'm from, I'm from Philly, but my family's from Virginia, North Carolina, and I have English in me, but that's all I know. Yeah, yeah, you definitely, look, so for example, check this out, ready? They don't have any white blood in them, right? They don't have any European blood. You might, you could maybe, but I don't think. My mom's half Egyptian. She's half Egyptian, yeah. but yeah, so she has that, the Northern Irish, but yeah, the nor, the, that North Africa yeah. thing. But they have, you two, can you, you stand over here. No, you, you two stand. They have no white blood in them, man. You don't have any white blood, do you? No, no, they have no white blood. They do. They do. Most African Americans over time, so here, as an example, just so y'all know, dudes, when we, when we do genetic testing on black, on, black people, on black Americans, what we find is when you get down here, like the Gullah people off the islands of, of South Carolina, there's like no white blood at all. And then you start going on inland and you start going, and eventually we start doing genetic testing across the United States, watching as black Americans, former slaves, left slavery and started moving north, like going to Detroit, going to the west, going to Washington, going wherever. And they, you know, what we see is the percentage of white blood starts to increase, right? So if I look at the three, here, dude, you switch places with her. Look at, first off, look at skin tone. So you see, you see white features, right? You see, when I look at you, I'm like, okay, hang on. I see, I see, you're not, you're not the same. I, I would see you and, do you look at them and know they're African American? Yeah, do you look at them? Can you, do the three of you look at, hang on, do the three of you look at her and know, do you have an idea where she's from? Do you know she's not African American? Do you know, bro, KJ? You don't know? <laughs> Dude, what do you know, bro? All right, fuck. You don't know where you're from. You don't know where, how to get a good barber in this town. You know, do you, so, and you look at these two and know they're not African-American? No. You don't? The middle one, yeah, the last one kind of. So not. talk in the mic. The middle one, yes, the last one, not really. The, the, this guy, not really. What's your name again, bro? Bryant. Brian. Bri what? With a Brian. Bryant, yeah. okay. Yeah, and what's your name again? Uh, Oyen. Oyen? Rimas. So, okay, so for her you do, for him you don't. And say, how about you? I mean, I could tell the girl with You're the talking to the mic. I could tell that the girl with the red jacket um, is an African-American, but I can't really tell between the other two. Yeah, okay, so, so same here. Like, when I, when, I look, when I look at you two, I immediately know, okay, you're, not, you're African. You're not African-American. And like, this is what I want you to start to pay attention to. What am I seeing? Like, what am I seeing in you? It's like, what am I seeing? Here, dude, Stan. Mike, come over here real fast. Does get, if you look at, you just see them walking down the street. They're just like two black guys, right? But they're not two black guys. They're two guys with very, one's an American and one's Nigerian. Who's American now? But you're Nigerian, right? Don't. So you see, you see that? Like this is the thing. It would be like saying, here's the equivalent. Are there, any, are there any Europeans in here who are Europeans and you're not American Europeans? No, you're from, you're from Europe, like with a passport from Europe. Anybody? Anybody who is, you are? Wait, you are? So here, can I borrow this real fast? Where are you from? Wait, stand up real fast. Hey, can you get her on the Jumbotron, bro? Can you stand up real fast? Jumbotron, whatever it is. What's your name? Valentina. Valentina? Yeah. You're? Italian. Italian. Matteo. One of yours, pal. My brother. Oh, that's your brother? Yeah. Oh, dog, all right. So, listen. So, look at, that would be like saying to Valentina, just because she's white, calling her an American. Oh, well, you're white, so you're an American. Let's put you all together. You're not, you're not, you're Italian. Mm -hmm. So, what it makes you Italian? Like, I'm going to, hang on. That's a stupid question. It's like, if someone calls you an American, you would say? No way. <laughs> no way. Because <laughs> Americans are? Americans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't say stupid or ignorant <laughs> like that because that would get you in trouble. Exactly, because they're Americans. It's a different culture. It's like if I go to Italy and someone says, ah, oh, or like, I don't know, like Spain and someone's, ah, oh, Samuel, oh, you're Spanish. I'm like, no, I'm an American. Like, it wouldn't make sense. So, it's, so she's Italian. Just because she's white doesn't make her an American. Thanks, Valentina. So same here. When we put people together, 
in this way, like they're not, they're, they're different peoples. And I want to point this out because it's like here, they, African Americans aren't really African. Hang on, we have two minutes left. I want to make this point here really fast. These, the three of you, over time, because of the nature of slavery, you either have white blood or Native American blood. And many black people say it's Native American blood, but it's usually white blood. But no, but what happens is over time, you start, you develop, you have more blood, more admixture, and you don't. And so, fuck, man, I'm, you get the point. All right, dog. Dude, thanks again, dog. Thanks, man. All right, listen, thanks, dog. Dude, thanks, dog. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Thank All right, here's the deal, y'all. Um, have a safe weekend, and if you need some white perfect, come see me. Also, don't yo, don't forget the uh, four people whose names were up on the slideshow. And your videos, first assignments are due this weekend. Oh.